Hello students, hello world, Dr. K here. My job is to make you a math genius. And today I wanna show you how to solve a Rubik's cube from start to finish. So I'm gonna follow the beginner method, layer by layer method. We're gonna start through the entire progression, layer by layer. And I have some progressive um, cubes that we start with. So in the, in the beginning, I give you this cube just to show you that the centers don't move and there's a color pattern. Remember, we call it the booger color pattern. We put yellow on top in the entire solution. The yellow is going to be on top. If you put yellow on top and look for the blue and go in a clockwise direction, it is booger. Blue, orange, green, red. So that's just the color pattern. Th basically, this the purpose of this cube, the first cube, is just to show you that the centers don't change, the centers don't move, they stay in their position when you solve the cube. After that, you learn how to make what we call the daisy, the daisy, yellow center and four white petals. After the daisy, you learn to create a white cross that is aligned. Look, the sides are aligned. From there, you learn to do the first layer. The complete white face, meaning you place the white corners and look at that. The white face is done, but also on every side, it matches the center. Red, red, red with red, green, orange, blue, it matches. After that, you can pretty much guess what we're going to do next. We're building it layer by layer. So as you can tell, after that, you build the second layer, the second layer. The second layer, you have a cube that looks like this. And we don't care what happens here. We don't care what looks here, but we pretty much know that yellow is gonna be the, in the center. That's the middle edges. After the middle edges, we create the yellow cross. we we'll create the yellow cross. And we don't care that it's aligned or not. We align the yellow cross so that it's matching with the center. The one before last, we place the corners. So we know, for example, that this corner is placed correctly. This corner is placed correctly. Corners are placed correctly, but they are not the right orientation. We have to turn them. We don't turn them. We don't twist them manually by hand. We twist them with algorithm. And the last step, we solve the cube. So let's go ahead. Let's mix a cube. Let's go through the step. Let's mix a cube. And let me solve step by step as if I was a student following Dr. K's layer by layer begin beginner method, which really is not my method, but it's a method that's uh, universally known layer by layer. And I just want to make it simple with as few as possible algorithms. Okay, let's start. We have the cube right here. Yellow is on top. The first thing we want, remember what we want? The first thing we want is we want the daisy. We want it to look like, we want it to look like that. We don't care about anything else. So we look for the white edges. Here's a white edge that could go up in two steps. One, two. Where else is a white edge? There's a white edge here. This is really just intuitive. There are no algorithms for these steps. And now we have ourselves the daisy. We don't care about everything else. We have the daisy. These two Rubik's cubes are equivalent. They are the same. If there's a black sticker here or there's no sticker or the sticker has been removed, that means we just don't care what's there. So there is the daisy. Dr. K, what comes after the daisy? Students, math geniuses, we have to align. So that is not aligned, not aligned. See that? This one is aligned. Okay, we got lucky with that one. So what we do, we turn it 180 upside down. The white sticker, the petal of the daisy looking towards the ceiling, we're going to make it look towards the floor, 180. And let's look more. Is there anything else that's aligned? No. Well, we can align it ourselves. Here is green with green. Turn 180. Blue. See? Turn 180. And here is red. Oh, the red is aligned. The, the daisy has lost all its petals. Well, where did they go? They are upside down. Look, they have now made we have now made the white cross and the white cross is aligned. Look, orange with orange, green with green, red with red, blue with blue. This cube for all practical purposes, Dr. K says, is equivalent to this cube. These two cubes are equivalent. Okay, what do we do from here? What's next, Dr. K? You can guess, students, we're gonna put in the white corner. We want this to be white, 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 but also 
the colors to match. This is where we first enter our first algorithm. I wrote it down to make it easy for you right here. So let's take a look. What we do, we're always solving. Remember, we're always solving with yellow on top. So this is how to insert the white corners. Well, first of all, let's locate a white corner. Here's a white corner, white, uh, red, white, and blue. See that? Go, USA, red, white, and blue, red, white, and blue. We need to put it between the red center and the blue center. Right now, students, is it between the red center and the blue center? You better say no, Dr. K. It's between the red and the green. So we know that it needs to go this way, and now it's between red and blue. Okay, so I'm right-handed, so I'm just giving you the right-handed version. We're gonna go one, two, three, four. We're gonna keep doing it. What this algorithm is gonna do is gonna take that piece, the corner that we're looking for, it's gonna to toggle it, move it, bounce it, up, down, up, down, up, down, and each time turning it. We wanna get lucky, we want it to end up down with the white sticker all the way at the bottom. So let's do it. One, two, three, four, it's not there yet. One, two, three, four, not there yet. One, two, three, four, not there yet, but getting closer. One, two, three, four, there. And I know from experience that that's the, that this one now it's gonna work. This one, two, three, four, next time it's gonna work. One, two, three, four, that works. See, it's one, two, three, four. Your fingers get so quickly used to it. Uh, let's go very quickly. I want this video to be short. Blue, orange, and white. We find, right here between orange and blue. There are many other algorithms, but I'm trying to teach you one algorithm that solves it all, and then I'll teach you more advanced algorithm, more shortcuts, but let's start. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Finally, now it's gonna go in. One, two, three, four. See that? That works. What happens here? Red, Christmas. Red, white, and green. We know that that is here. Very quickly, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that is it. Now, have we placed all the white corners? Look at that. All the white corners have been placed. This Rubik's Cube right now is equivalent to the first layer cube. Remember, that's the one that Dr. K gives you to borrow for a day or two. And I say, come back to me, bring it when it's solved. And then when you're ready, when you graduate, you get to the next cube and so on, step by step. So Dr. K says, these two cubes are equivalent. They are the same. Look at that, they are the same. Anything that has black or sticker removed, this cube has been sacrificed. We don't care about it. This, this cube, this Rubik's cube has solved, has been solved to the point of a first layer. Okay, so what happens after this, love? Oh, uh, if you guessed it correctly, it is the middle edges. So we want the cube to look like this. We don't care about anything in the third layer. We just want it the second layer. So there are four middle edges here. One, two, three, and four. These four middle edges have to go in the right space. So there is another algorithm for this. So what we look for, what we look for, Dr. K is trying to make it easy for you. So what we look for is we look for an upside down letter T. Let's look right here. Here's an upside down letter T in the color blue. We're looking for an edge that does not involve yellow because all the yellow is gonna be on top. So this is an edge that does not involve yellow. We make an upside down letter T. In, hap in this case, it happens to be an upside down letter T that is blue. Now, where is the destination? Where is the target? This middle edge is gonna target where? It's gonna end up being where? We want it to go here or here. This is red and this is orange. Remember, it's blue and orange. So not a trick question. Where, what is the target? Where do we want it to go? Yes, if you said between blue and orange because it's blue and orange, then you are correct. So what do we do here? We look at the algorithm. I made it very easy for you. It's right here. Look at that. The target is right here. Like I said, the target is right here on the left-hand side. The target is right here. So we follow these four steps. Step number one, we move the middle edge out of the way, playing hard to get. The target moves up towards it. 
it comes back, the middle edge comes back, and we undo the second step. And now what we have is we have coupled. So we have coupled together, we have coupled together the corner and the edge. So now how do we put that in? Because look, we messed up the white face. How do we put that in? There are more, more than one way, but I'll show you this way right here. You turn the front face um, counterclockwise. So watch, watch the algorithm. See this white here? Right? One, watch, two, three, four. And I have the steps right here. You need your Rubik's Cubes to follow. If you're just watching, that's not how you learn. You learn by doing, right? Let's see one more. Upside down, letter T, upside down, letter T, and it happens to be green. Oh, it also goes here. So very quickly, one, two, three, four. They are coupled now. Now we put it in one, two, three, four. Uh, let's see this yellow. We don't care about this yellow. We don't care about this yellow. We don't care about this one right here is orange and green. So we need an upside down letter T in what color students tell me the color of the window, which is orange. So we go to an upside down right here and um it's just by luck that it goes it goes also on the left so one two three four one two three four and now let's look at that we have one more middle edge and it went right here one two three four one two three four many ways to do this but basically if, if if the target was on the other side, it could happen that the target is on the other side. We just do the mirror image. I'll, I'll give a picture of both of these. Okay, at this point, we are done with the first two layers. So a lot of students, they borrow this cube. They take it home. If they solve it, then they're ready for the next one. Basically, that means you have done the first two layers. So Dr. K, what comes after that? Remember, we need to create the yellow cross, where basically we have the first two layers done, like I said, and we want to create the, the yellow cross. So what do we do here? The whole idea is that to create the yellow cross, we have four possibilities. To create the yellow cross, we have four possibilities. So it's either that we have a yellow dot. Remember, we're only talking about the yellow, yellow cross. We, we have to have an even number of yellow petals, either zero, two, or four. We could have a dot. We can have the letter R. See, that's all we care about, the, the shape right now. We could have a minus and what we want is a plus. Every once in a while we get lucky and we get a plus, then we skip this step. We don't have to do anything. Right now we are at, at the R level. So this algorithm is basically an F followed by a hexi, which is what the same thing that we did before to place the white corner, followed by the undoing of the setup step, which is F prime. Let me show you. So here we hold it. The R is this way. F, R, U, R prime, U prime and then F prime. And what does that make? That gives us the minus. Follow the steps with me, see? I'll give a better picture here. One, then one, two, three, four, and then undo the first move. And now what we have, we have ourselves a yellow cross. We have ourselves a yellow cross. We don't care that it's aligned or not. We, I say, Dr. K says, that these two Rubik's cubes are equivalent. Okay, what do we do next? Well, we have ourselves the yellow cross. What we want to do is make sure that it is aligned. And we do that by swapping. We swap two edges. We have an algorithm that keeps the first two layers intact, only does swapping the edges on the front and the right. Swap these two edges. So we look at right here and we see, is, are there two edges? Can we line it up? Let's see. We have, okay, there you go. So these two edges are aligned. Oh, we got lucky here. So I tell you what, let me do this algorithm to swap these edges. Okay. And just so pretend that 
we have a situation where we need to do it. This is a cycle of two algorithms. So if you do it twice, it goes back. Okay, so there it is. Okay, we have a yellow cross. The yellow cross has two adjacent edges. And they happen to be, in this case, they turn out to be the orange and the blue. And these two edges have to swap. The front edge that is green, that needs to be red. The right hand side edge that is red, that needs to be green. We follow this algorithm, right? We follow this algorithm. And now we have ourselves a yellow cross that is aligned. The Rubik's cube I say is equivalent to this one. So if I give you this one to borrow, that means I want you to be able to solve the Rubik's cube up to this step. What we need to do is we're gonna place the yellow corners. We're gonna place the yellow corners. And we look for the yellow corners and we don't care that it has yellow on top. We're gonna turn that, we're gonna get to that later. Right now, we just wanna see if there's a, a, a cube that is in the right place. It doesn't look like that any of them are in the right place, but that's okay. We hold the cube this way, doesn't matter. This corner right here, I imagine if this was, if the top was a map of the US, this would be Florida, right? This would be Florida, this, this would be Florida, this would be, uh, let's say California, this would be Washington State, let's say like Seattle area, and this would be New York. So what we do is we hold it so that Florida stays put, and then these three cor corners are gonna swap. So basically, uh, LA or California is going to go to Seattle. Seattle is going to go to New York. New York is going to go to LA. These are going to swap like musical chairs with this algorithm. So one, take the white column, take its head off to the side, take the column on the right, take its head off to the side, restoring the left column, bring it down, Go back, you restore that, and turn one more time. And now what we have is they permeated. And maybe that produced, yes, that did produce for us one corner in the right spot. The other three still need to permute. So I know that for sure now they're going to be in the right place. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And now all the four corners are in the right spot. This Rubik's Cube now is almost solved. The first two layers are done. The yellow cross is done. The yellow cross is aligned. The corners are all placed in the right position. What we have to do is turn the corner. This is where somebody says, oh, Dr. K, I know how to do this. I just take a, my, my hands and twist the corner. And no, 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 no. That's how you give Dr. K a heart attack. No, do not do that. What we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna show you the algorithm to turn the corners. Turn the corners. How to turn the yellow corners. Okay, love? How to turn the yellow corners. Here's the philosophy behind it. We're always solving the Rubik's Cube with yellow on top. We're going to turn the yellow corners. It's one, two, three, four. It's another commutator. I'll talk about what commutator is. You actually don't have to worry about it in middle school, in high school, maybe college, maybe advanced math if you want to know what the word commutator means. But we don't care about that right now. We're going to do one, two, three, four. Notice odds and evens. The odd step, number one, and number three are opposite. See how? R and R prime, opposite. The even steps, the two and the four, also opposite. So it's almost like it cancels itself out in a way. We're gonna do this algorithm two times or four times. We're gonna do it until we see yellow on the top. When we're done, we're gonna twist the top in a clockwise direction. I Let's start. stopped. Why did I stop? Two times or four times? So I did it twice. It worked. Let's clock it. Here is a clocking. Watch. That's clocking. Okay, let's do it now until we get yellow here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We got yellow. That's it. We got lucky. Two times. Are you ready? Let's clock it. And now let's do it either two times or four times. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and adjust your face, and the cube is solved. See that? I wanted to keep this video really short, really sweet, and 
I want you to solve the Rubik's Cube. I want you to get the medal, you know, and this stays with you for the rest of your life. And uh, it's like riding a bicycle. My job is to make you a math genius. Dr. K here. Let me say hello.